Welcome to the IBEX Method Podcast. We are your hosts, Adam Fouts and Steve Beta. And uh, it's been a long time coming. Steve's been out with uh, baby leave, so we're just checking in. Final episode of the season. and uh, Best that? dad ever. <laughs> just so you guys know that I am the best dad ever. It, the cup says it, so it's it's true. Yeah, that's, uh, that's debatable. You know, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, it's the beta. <laughs> So what's up, Steve? I just wanted to, uh, again, take this time, season two. We've had actually an excellent season. We had, uh, this would be episode 10. We had a lot of amazing guests, a lot of of great content. Um, I know that as we've been running, I've been kind of taking the reins this season, but, um, you know, we've we've missed you. So I wanted to check in and see how life is with with you and the family. Yeah, hoping to get back on uh, for the next season. But um, I think it's been pretty busy lately with the newborn and, Went back to work full time and um, have been doing um, my side companies as well. I do digital media productions, um, presentation solutions, and also I've been doing freelance video work again. And it's been awesome. It's just been very, very busy between working the 40 hours, um, then doing all the work outside of my usual job, and then every last second it's been being a dad. And has been the biggest change um, going back full time to my regular position because you're just so used to having so much time with the kid and, and out of nowhere you don't. So it's just an adjustment, but it's, it's all good because I'm able to support us so my wife could be off and take care of the baby. And it's a win win. It's, it's been great. That's awesome, man. I'll be honest, we're picking up a feed. I think it sounds like it might be uh, little Stevie kicking his feet. I don't know if he's in the room with you. No, he's downstairs. He's downstairs. Uh, okay. I'm wondering if I just if I'm bumping something. There we go. It sound like uh, like he was on the ground, you know, like that squishy sound. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably just me. Just. There, yeah, that is yeah, what it yeah, is actually. Yeah, it's my shirt. I got you. <laughs> yeah. No worries. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I think um, we're excited for you. Um, if it's okay to talk about it, I know that you guys had the, the IVF. Is that the correct? Oh, yeah. Is, yeah, um, we did um, in vitro fertilization. We um, It's an interesting process because um, you go through a phase where you're giving, I think it was two or three shots. Um, she had to grow extra eggs, so I believe we got 15 eggs originally, and then I think half of those fertilized correctly and then a quarter of those um, developed past a certain point where it needed to. And then after genetic testing, we had two good embryos. And then sadly, we lost our first one a pretty decent amount of the way in. And um, we decided to go straight into our next transfer uh, about a month or two, um, a few months afterwards after everything was good and safe to go again and um everything went great and now we have our little boy Stephen joseph and he's he's my everything he's just wonderful it's the best feeling ever and it was our last good embryo and it was just uh such a magical thing man um grateful for everything and made the whole process worth it and more me and my wife are closer because of it and worth every penny and every tear stress of everything we want to is awesome yeah man well that's yeah i think from my understanding i mean you know we've again it's a season two so i think that obviously people who know you and are, are, who know you know you would, would understand that you were going through that um but I think all last season it was kind of like going through that process, if I remember correctly, and doing the doing the shots and, um, yeah, I just remember. I remember I told you like, I had this dream, Steve, or like we just like saw this thing happen, and it was like you were explaining to me that this is your child, and like we saw the process take, and um, I think a few months later we found out, you know, but uh, it's just, you you had you had that that thing, and then my friend from my friend Mike from work had the same exact thing. He just came up to me one day where he's like. I had a dream and it's happening. I was like, "Oh, okay." He's like, "He's like, it's a boy." I was like, "Whoa, okay." Because technically, we could have known what the sex of both embryos are, but we wanted to keep it a 
keep it a secret because one, it's just fun to find out when the baby yeah. comes. So yeah. I think that's I think that's exciting either way. But also, I think it was an emotional protection thing too because hypothetically, if one of them was a boy, one of them was a girl, and like you just sit in the back of your head somewhere, you're like, it's kind of heartbreaking. But I'm glad we kept it a secret for multiple reasons, and it's it's just been it's been awesome I'm getting used to the rhythm routines of everything and he's babbling up a storm now and rolling over doing a bunch of fun stuff eating cereal now all the all the good stuff it's, don't even know what else to say about it. it's just magical it's amazing literally the best thing ever yeah that's awesome man miraculous for sure yeah and i there's a couple episodes where I, you know, I alluded to the fact that you weren't here um, because of, you know, what, you know, your family and stuff like that. But I, I refer to Stevie as a miracle baby. Um, this is the reason why, just the process that you guys went through. And I, I think I told somebody, one of my friends, I think sometimes people could see that as a derogatory thing, but it, it truly is a miracle and he's a blessing. And I'm glad that you guys are all uh, have that opportunity to experience parenthood. I appreciate that. Yeah. It, it, he is a miracle. Like there's no events or buzz about it. Like, like, it was just against all of our odds that we had and it just worked and that's all we ever wanted and now we have everything we've ever wanted so everything else in life is a bonus at this point yeah yeah no that's incredible dude and i i think about just your life in general i think uh I don't want to say you always got the short end of the stick, if you will, but I know it hasn't always been easy, whether it's, you know, kicking or whether that was uh, running. Um, just in, again, growing up with you, there's always that little extra more you had to do to, like, get the outcome that you wanted. And uh, it's amazing to see in this instance, too, that I just feel like, I don't know, I just feel like it's a blessing from God, you know, and it, it came through. And uh, hearing how it just helped you and is become stronger is, is incredible, too. So I'm... Um, yeah. definitely happy for you guys and uh, there's something you want to say oh, yeah or? i was just saying it's when when something comes easy it's you don't appreciate it as much like yeah. I'm, okay if we would have had a kid naturally and easy and quickly yeah it would have been amazing but i feel like there's something a little extra special about it now just because of how hard we worked and i'm not saying i wouldn't have appreciated a typical child maybe one day we'll be blessed with another one but for now i am ecstatic because something i wasn't quite sure was ever going to happen and together we got through it and put all our effort into it and like i said from having situations throughout my life it just gave me the the drive to just not give up on things because it's and we wouldn't have given up even if um this one didn't work but it did so it worked out perfect yeah that's no, awesome i think it says a lot just about your character and, and his as well. And I think that, I think little Stevie's in great hands. He's going to have a, a great upbringing. And I'm, I'm excited for you guys. And as you were talking, I was thinking about when we visited, I guess it would have been two Christmases ago because COVID was last yeah. Christmas. So um, you guys were hanging out with Jeremiah and I'm, I'm excited that, you know, this upcoming Christmas that you'll be able to have a picture with, with Stevie by the tree and, uh, have those experiences and memories oh so yeah that's, that's now awesome. that everything's starting to like get on get on the um healing train so yeah i'm all vaxxed up now too <laughs> better because i work in healthcare nice. so we're able to get it pretty mm -hmm. early so definitely feeling more comfortable out of, about a lot of things too because we've been extra careful just because of everything we went through to get this child and might be overreacting i don't care but that's what we're doing <laughs> Yeah, no, I get it. And I, you know, we, um, you know, I came up to Ohio to visit and I, we've been in and out of hospitals all last year. Coinc coincidentally, it happened to face <laughs> the pandemic and um, we go to Ohio and I'm like, all right, we're just going to be with family. And I, I wanted to see you guys. And then within three days of being there, I came down with COVID and I was in quarantine till the night of Christmas Eve. But I'm like, there's, there's no way I'm going to see you guys. I'm not going to do that to you all. And, um, but, you were definitely someone I wanted to see, and, and but I'm glad you guys, you know, made it through this Christmas and uh, had you guys' memories. I'm glad you're I'm glad, glad you recovered too. Like that's that's very very important. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I could talk about that, but 
um, yeah, I was just just very thankful more than anything. But I'm, I don't know, man. I'm 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 glad you're on here. I'm glad we got to connect. I know that you know we've been connecting through messaging and text and stuff, but it hasn't really been th this kind of conversation in a while. Yeah. But understandably, <laughs> yeah, um, haven't really had much downtime lately. <laughs> Right. By, by yeah. choice, too. So, by <laughs> choice, but um, choice and necessity. But the nice thing is, like, we always understand you've you've gotten busy before I've gotten busy, and we just understand that, like, we're both here. We're both here, and it's going to be always going to be there. So, yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. So, kind of moving on, I think. Um, so, you got this new life, man. And I uh, see so you, you've alluded to the efforts that you're undertaking, you got a new company that you're working with on top of your job, on top of parenting. Do you feel like um, that parenting has propelled you into your dreams that you've always wanted? Like, how do you, uh, what, what led you to where you are now, I guess? A little bit of both. I feel like, um, especially um, with my wife being home with the baby and it takes a lot of pressure off of me mentally, knowing that I have someone taking care of the baby that I really trust and care about because <laughs> especially when they're when he's this little so I'm taking this time to really put in the extra mile to build something more or even I feel like worst case scenario we have extra income coming in so I can get ahead I get driven I miss doing video production work and I've been very much enjoying it lately now the um, the graphic design stuff has been more of a slow and steady process. Um, my partner is in Tampa and um, we're just working on a bunch of different things right now. We're being very particular on the clients that we're seeking out for that. So we're finished up a few um, final touches before we do like a full full um, launch for everything. But it's it's been a lot of work, but it's I'm excited to see it all pay off. But yeah, definitely having a kid has kind of put me into the, hey, I want to be somewhere in 10 years where I'll be able to have the extra time with him. I know it stinks right now because I still get I still get enough time with him, which is nice. Mm -hmm. But if I have less time with him now, I'll be able to enjoy him more like when he's doing sports, maybe coach him when he's older, go to his games, even if I'm not coaching, go on vacations with him, like being able to really enjoy him in those years. So I feel like it's kind of a little extra motivation to get to that point. Yeah, no, I get, I get that. I think the motivation for me, I was going through my healthcare stuff, getting medically retired and then we had a baby and it was like the most in ideal situation at the time. But um, I'm like, we just got to get out of debt. That was really it. That was kind of the, the motivating factor. And then, um, Really, I was like, okay, I'm getting medically retired. Maybe I could just be a traveling dad and I'll just, you know, Sarah can work and I'll take him to go see like friends and uh, and stuff like that. But um, I did a weekend trip down to South Carolina. I watched a friend graduate their platoon as a drill instructor. And, and Jeremiah's there like in his in his car seat with me. Um, we're just sitting in the stands as you see platoons of new kids, like new graduates of, of Marines. And it's kind of funny because he's like moving his fingers. He's loving the music. Um, but long story short, by the time I got home, I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> I just can't afford, financially, I cannot afford to be a traveling dad. So, um, you got to be a little more responsible. But I, I really love that that time with him, though, in the car and just, like, I don't know, just those experiences. And now we're in a new phase where, you know, their personality is coming out and you get to see what they're interested in and you get to kind of build and dream with them. So, it's, it's really cool. But, yeah, so now I, I understand it is – I remember the first day I dropped Jeremiah off at, at uh, it was a babysitter on base, a Marine Corps base. But um, like at the time, my health was just really not where it should have been. And I'm like, I'm having trouble taking care of him myself or in taking care of myself. Right. So, but the moment I dropped him off to go to my first job outside the Marine Corps, like I'm in tears because I'm like, like, why is somebody else raising my child? You know? Um, but I also understood at the time, like it's just, the path that we needed to take one for me to recover and to be a better person in general and then to be a better father um so i i understand it. i know the sacrifice now may seem like it's hard and it is hard um 
but I think, I think, I think it definitely pays dividends, you know? So, um, and I, conversations we've had, I know that, you know, you're doing all you can to embrace the time with him, even in the now. So just keep doing that and, and, and help out, you know, as you can. And I think that you'll be, you'll be good. Definitely. Yeah, man. Now the hardest thing has been finding time to work out. <laughs> <laughs> it's been next to damn near impossible, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there trying to get like two or three days a week. We have a spinning bike now. I've been taking that up a lot more and trying to get that cardiovascular health back in check because I haven't been in good like cardiovascular health in a while because I've been lifting for a long time. But now building up that endurance and trying to get my throat to adapt to it and feel mm -hmm. better, be able to breathe properly and not feel horrible afterwards. And like I said, it's, it's a very odd feeling with my esophagus like when – I, when I'm, when I exert force for an extended period of time, like, I, I just can't explain it, but things are getting better, which is nice. Um, biggest change I've had to make recently, I realized I can't have meat anymore. Oh, so wow. I'm down to fish and egg whites for my protein, basically. Wow. And, and whole wheat, whole wheat has a good amount of, um, um, stuff in there. So, but like it's I've, I've been feeling like an addict like i want a hamburger so bad but i would pay very badly i just noticed uh, my reactions started getting worse and worse and I, I feel worse and worse after eating steak or or any type of beef or, or pork and i was like okay um i'm gonna cut this out for a couple weeks and my days got better and better i still have some days where it flares up but in comparison it's been way better I've also been stupid and haven't rescheduled my appointment with the Cleveland Clinic I was supposed to go to um, the day before my son was born. No. <laughs> I had to cancel that because we were getting induced. So I've been putting that off since October, and I just need to call and schedule it so that I get my second opinion to make sure there's nothing else wrong. Because if there's nothing else wrong, I know I just need to keep course on what I'm doing now with my diet changes and things have been getting better. So. I decided just to never step on a scale like again. And as long as I feel good, I feel good. That's how I need to look at it from now on. Because I mean, I've, I've never been big, like, but as long as I feel good and just make myself happy, that's all I need to do anymore. Yeah, I think that's the part of it, right? I think um, and, and feeling good is a mental, physical, and like a spiritual uh, total embodiment, if you will. So I think that's that's good. And just to kind of recap, you know, for anybody who's listening, so you've had, you were born with uh, like a lactose. Yeah, uh, lactose allergy. Okay, yeah. Lactose case in and whey. So I'm just straight up allergic anaphylaxis yep. level of milk allergy. And then as I got older, I developed a chicken allergy and poultry allergy, which is really, really weird because for a while I was able to eat dark meat or like chicken wings or stuff. But I couldn't have breast meat and now I can't have any and then slowly I, I had a little moment where I was fluctuating with beef a little bit and now it's full out like I just can't eat it because it makes my esophagus inflamed so cut that out and um, went through a phase where um, I was doing a lot of vegetarian stuff like I can't have too much soy too much soy just makes me feel nauseous and then pea protein I'm allergic to now. Wow. Um, a lot of nuts, like almost all nuts now too. So just trying to find stuff that like actually like satisfies my hunger and that I actually want to keep eating. Because right now I'm kind of down to like five solid type of meals that I like, but I'm eating like five, to, like four or five times a day. So mm -hmm. just kind of getting tired of it. But I'm trying to try different things, but. When you try different things, you find stuff that tastes like crap, and then you're like, "I'm." Then you get kind of mad for wasting money on something that doesn't taste good, and then, like I said, just just getting used to just eating certain things. The nice thing is like different fish have like different tastes and textures mm -hmm. and flavors, which is nice. So just trying to vary up my fish intake really, and just finding stuff that doesn't make my throat feel like shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it comes down to <laughs> yeah no, i get it like, like it's plain and simple that's and, and things have been a lot better my bad days have been less often 
and I bounce back a lot quicker when I do have a bad day. Because so. because of what you're eating, you're saying? Yeah, you, yeah. yeah definitely because of what I'm eating. Because I was, I mean, well, I still need to go to the Cleveland Clinic to get my my secondary, um, my second opinion, just to make sure there's nothing else goofy. Because I scheduled that when I was having some really, really bad times. Mm -hmm. And I think I was eating a lot of beef around that time, but it didn't, it wasn't making me like sick like milk does or, or um, any other thing that I would have that type of reaction to. It was just, it was just making my esophagus raw. Wow. And puffed up and couldn't swallow right. I felt a lot of pressure on my nose when I tried to swallow. It was, mm. it was really weird because they sent me in for a monoscopy test. Um, have you ever, do you know what a monoscopy uh, test I'm not, is? I'm not familiar with the term, no. Okay. Um, it's this tube that's like that thick, I think. And get, yeah, about that thick, I think. Google it. It's not pleasant. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're awake. They shove it up your nose, down your throat, into your esophageal sphincter, all the way in your stomach. Wow. While you're awake. <laughs> the first time they put it in, they accidentally put it down my windpipe. So I'm like, Ow. like I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't talk. So they had to pull it out. So I had to do the whole process again. So that was miserable. Oh, wow. And then with how tight everything is in there like physically hurt and i couldn't like relax i was like in a panic it, but then they make you lay down on your side with it in there it takes small sips of water and it felt impossible oh, that man. Yeah, so i'm sorry for whoever is listening to this that ever needs a monoscopy test it's miserable i hope i talk it up so bad that it's not bad for you but um that it measures like the pressure from how you swallow and everything Everything came back good, which is good. I was really confused because I couldn't swallow right for the longest time. I was like, how is this okay? Mm -hmm. But now that I know if everything is inflamed and scar tissue is building up more, but it's it's been in two months, it'll be a year since my last um, dilation, which I was getting them done every three months. So. Mm -hmm. That shows progress at least i've been feeling a lot better i went from like one of my lowest lows probably right before my son was born to now i'm feeling a lot better wow i think the thing is like, i just need to eat enough because <laughs> between work and being busy just got to find time to eat and eat stuff that i don't get tired of eating so it's 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 been a roller coaster but i think i'm on the way to feeling at least normal or close to normal again well yeah i mean i even noticed it when you're talking it's um i know before it was like the swallowing as you're like i don't know like i don't uh, i had to constantly like i yeah. have to like have like hard dry swallows like mm -hmm. consistently because my throat would dry out almost like instantly for talking more than 30 seconds wow yeah, so, yeah so a lot easier wow Okay. Yeah. So you were, you were born with a lactose. Was it? Yeah. Lact lactose case in a way anaphylactic allergy. Allergy. Yeah. And then now you're dealing with, is it esophagitis? Is that where there's a special? It's, a, it's called eosinophilic esophagitis. It's okay. eosinophilic. Um, white blood cells attack my esophagus. Wow. And, and it could be other stuff too. Like I know I can't have peppers because they, like any, anything real like extra spicy the most spicy i could go right now is like paprika like that's like a godsend because it kind of gives me a fix because i love spicy food mm -hmm. but i can't eat it anymore because i pay for days wow. like it just it just burns it was like i'm drinking like battery acid it feels like i drink battery acid after everything's done I haven't drank battery acid, but I could assume that's. I'm, but I'm assuming. I'm assuming that. I'm assuming that's what it feels like afterwards. Because yeah, wow. It's a very, interesting, very interesting burn. Yeah, I'm making these faces like I've drank it before, but I'm just clarifying I'm not drinking battery acid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they, for for a while they put me on a inhaler, a swallowing a swallowed mm. inhaler, and it was helping a little bit. But then I was I wasn't feeling right on it, so I stopped taking it. I mean, doctor didn't tell me to stop taking it, but. I did, and I. Ever since I cut out the meat, it's been, it's been way better. It sucks because I love meat. I'm not even telling people to give up meat. Out, eat as much meat as you can for me. <laughs> I'll say that. So yeah. I'm not. I'm. Yeah. 
eat, eat what's good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. I guess I was gonna say too. This isn't a uh, a knock on anyone on a carnivore diet or a veggie diet. It's just figuring out yeah, what we talked about before. Just figure out what's right for you, right? And that's that's kind of the process you're going through. And it's crazy too. Like it changes as your body changes. So. Yeah, and I think the thing that sucks, I'm, I'm not trying to complain about it, but it's the fact that I can't have a lot of vegetarian options for protein because a lot of vegetarian options I'm allergic to. Yeah. So it's like a weird pescatarian <laughs> modified diet. It's really, really weird, but hey, it's getting me where I need to be, and that's all that matters. And just so as long as I'm, go ahead. Happy, as long as I'm happy and healthy and I can have fun with my son, I'm, I'm set. And just so I'm clear, you were knocking the carnivore diet. Is that, is that my understanding? Oh, yeah, I was, I was totally knocking the carnivore diet. I was like, don't eat meat. It's terrible for you. I mean, terrible for you if you're like me and it causes your esophagus to not work. But yeah, that's all. Going through uh, those changes and trying to find time to exercise and get consistent with it again. Went down the rabbit hole of um, start skateboarding again, just to just to be able to have something different to like get out on like the skateboard up and down the street a little bit, do some tricks, miserably, almost getting them back, but it's fun. It's just kind of a nice little change of pace. I know you had me watching. <laughs> you had me and Jeremiah watching some uh, PS PlayStation One and Tony Hawk uh, Pro Skater uh, on no, YouTube, that's awesome. and I'm just like, man, the songs have taken me back because. After we messaged and I saw your Tony Hawk board, I uh, we got home and that song was in my head. The one was like, "Here I am doing everything I can." You know what I'm talking about? Like, oh yeah, that, that that yeah, that that whole entire soundtrack was amazing. It was, yeah. yeah. I think I think I got my one second. I got all my fun stuff right here, actually. Okay. All right, so talk, talk us through this. He got some boards. He yeah. Got some, I, he got some boards. Talk us through I, it. What do you got? Kind of got went down the rabbit hole for a second. Um, we'll go um, a little while ago when Ben Margera cleaned up his act for a little while, Element signed him back on and came out with a limited edition deck, and I had to get one because I'm just a fan. I absolutely love – I love Jackass and all that stuff, so I was like, I, I need to get it. <laughs> So I don't skate that one. That's going to get hung on the wall. Maybe I'll skate it one day, but only if I get good again. I don't want to ruin something like that. Um, a couple primitive decks. These are limited edition ones, and I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. <laughs> so I got a primitive eight and a quarter wider than I ride anyway. So these things, these suckers go for like, 250 plus on ebay and they're still going up in price and i'm just gonna hold on to it i got it for a lot cheaper than that i got it for like 30 bucks so oh. buy sell trade <laughs> marketplace i mean and then the one i'm riding right now it's also another primitive deck it's uh has goku paul rodriguez model um spitfire wheels bones bearing didn't pop the shields yet. Sounds way cooler <laughs> without. Sounds way cooler without the shields. Uh, Grizzly grip. Independent trucks. Nice man. It's a, it's a tank. I I love it though. Independent. The indies they're just so good. They're just built to work. And then my newest favorite is the board I always wanted when I was a kid growing up, and it was never available. But the Falcon Two, I I was obsessed with it. Never got it, but I found it on. They did a re release for the new Tony Hawk remaster, and oh my gosh, it it just sent me back. And I was like, I need to find this. I didn't know they made a special edition with that. And I hopped right on eBay and looked and looked and looked. And funny story about it, I got it for 40 bucks. No, I got it for 50. Um, and that's cheaper than what decks cost now. Decks are like 65 bucks now because wow. of the wood shortage and stuff. And all the companies are struggling to get um, wood to make their decks, actually. And um, funny story, the the guy that I bought it from lives literally on the same street that our campground's on. Wow. It's, yeah, I was like, that's, that's so weird. But yeah, I was able to snag that deck. Um, I, I told uh, my wife about it. 
And I was like, I'm gonna hang that. She's like, you're not gonna skate it. I was like, no, it's too beautiful. I was like, if I get good enough, I will skate it again. But for now, it's just gonna look pretty because I'm, I'm gonna skate it one day. I'm definitely gonna skate it. But the Goku one already had scratches on it. So I couldn't probably sell and get that a profit mm -hmm. out of that. Not about flipping it, but I was like, yeah, it has scratches and I need to skate something. I keep buying all these decks to look pretty and hang up. I need to skate something. So just do it. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. That's awesome, man. I was going to say a corny joke. I say just do a kickflip. <laughs> but, uh, if, uh, if I wasn't on the second floor of my house, I'd probably try one real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and I was also thinking, too, for anybody who's trying to unlock the, uh, the Falcon, just wait till you're in your 30s meet a guy from yeah. the campground and uh yeah, you, you you uh turn 31 go on ebay and <laughs> type in type in it and you just find it it's it's the ultimate cheat so now i unlock the deck that i think is the original i i don't know i think it's the first one that you could have with tony on the original game if i'm not mistaken i kind of want to pull that up now and find out if that's true or not yeah i can't remember but i remember it i remember that when i saw you had that board dude i'm like it just took me back i'm like i know this it image you know really does yeah it, it just it's ingrained in your mind it just you instantly think of the game yep and i was like because oh, I, I had i had the falcon three i used to skate that one and then i don't know what happened that board it disappeared somewhere when i when i moved so but now it, it's just a fun it's a fun hobby i've I love skating when I grew up, when I was growing up. And this is kind of giving me something to do. I'm not really shooting for anything athletically right now. I just want to be in better shape. And I think skating's fun. My my friend from up the street, Joe, he skates. My friend Craig skates. So we're going to, since we're both vac we're all vaccinated, uh, we're probably going to head to the skate park right up the street from our house soon. It's, nice. it's just going to be fun. A bunch of old guys uh, carving up the skate park and if we get good enough, we might make us like a small skate <laughs> skate video just for fun. Yeah, nothing but like curb slappies and <laughs> a little bit of mini ramp stuff. It's just fun. It, you gotta find a way to have fun, and that, it's been hard to find fun outside of home. Mm -hmm. I'm having so much fun with my son, I was like, but you, I think you need something else just to kind of escape for a second a little bit. And I think that's kind of what helped me escape for a second <laughs> because I, some, I always get stuck on one or two things. And if I find my focus can be put into something less stressful, more productive, I won't stress out about other things like um, work. Work is like so crazy busy, which is normal. It's okay. But I'll sit there and like overthink stuff that I'm going to be doing next day at work when it's not going to help or do anything. But if I sit there and try to decide what skateboard I want to get or like like which one's sweet or how am I going to set this one up, like like picking out like my full setup, it took me like a month because I was like, all right, it's not nice yet. I'm going to get one piece at a time. And by the time it's nice, I'm going to have my deck, put to, my whole complete put together. And it really kind of just gave me my escape for a little bit. And I liked it. It was fun. And I'm an adult, so I could buy what I want now. Yeah, you can unlock any board you want. <laughs> yeah exactly i mean yeah <laughs> you get pricey i'm not gonna lie it, 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 this one was pricey but yeah let's see i don't want to talk about it <laughs> yeah no, i get you yeah it's funny man so the the day i saw your boards was the day i was i was I, i've created a ritual i guess is uh i'll go get some donuts after my uh, my track work and uh it's kind of funny. We talk about Ibex, talk about balance, you know, but I, I'm in a phase now where I just, I'm kind of enjoying, I don't know. I'm, 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 in, I'm in a down season right now. I am training to get my mileage up and get some strength going and stuff, but my season won't start till May 15th. But um, so I'll, I'll tighten up my diet when that time comes, but I saw your boards and then I, I went and got donuts and when I was there, I did some skateboarders there. And I'm like, you know what? Like <laughs> these kids never get any love. They're always seen as like the outcasts and the misfits. They kicked and, out of places. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I pull up, I'm like, let me just get these kids some donuts, you know? And I, I, uh, I was like debating that. I was like, I don't want to be like a creepy old man, you know? So I just, but I bought two boxes, bought two half dozens and then gate. I was like, Hey, you're like, <laughs> I was like, I know this is kind of weird, a creepy old man coming up to you, but 
you want some donuts, you know, and just kind of gave him some love and let That's him awesome. know. Yeah, I'm like, but you you kind of inspired me because it just took me back to, um, I don't know, this kid's riding around the neighborhood, my brother and stuff on their skateboards, and the neighbor's getting mad and <laughs> just calling the cops for no oh, reason. It, it, you know? it brings you back. Like, it just brings you back to those times. Like, even if you weren't a skater, like, everyone knows that that time. Like, when, yeah. when Tony Hawk was blowing up and everybody thought skating was cool, whether you skated or not, it just brings you back man and that i think that's why i went back down that hole for a second i was like i miss it so i've been watching all all the good old skate videos like watching girl yeah right and round three and all the all the good ones yeah like when you say bam, every time i hear bam margera that's what makes me think about yeah I, I don't associate you with tony i associate you with bam margera but i don't know why and then uh because i used to do stupid stuff yeah <laughs> that's why i used to be semi self destructive and had fun doing it. So yeah, that's probably yeah. why. And I, I wasn't that good. So I just jump off of stuff and make up for it. <laughs> make up for my lack of skill with um, entertainment. I got you. You have the term to say content over form. So you had, you had good content. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I remember my brother, so like he'd do like a, a manual for like, five minutes i don't even know how he did it just <laughs> just down the street you know i'm like what the heck aaron yeah yeah well, aaron just he adapts to everything somehow yeah yeah now he was a beast man he uh i don't know we had those you know in particle we had those little homes but he ended up <laughs> oh yeah he ended up uh just deciding to do like a just an ollie off the top of the house and landing on the, on the ground you know so that's just, awesome just ride it down the roof but I'm not encouraging any child to do this, uh, anybody that's listening, but we're just, we're just reminiscing right now. But that's awesome, man. I think, I think it's awesome to hear just, again, where you, where you are, where, where your family is, just a blessing with Stevie, um, how work is going, the, you know, the, the projects that you're taking on, kind of challenging yourself, and then finding that outlet throughout the process. Like, you're like, yeah, I'm getting back to cycling and stuff, but also just finding something that's pleasurable, enjoyable. And I think that, you know, for anybody listening, that's kind of what I would encourage them, right? Like, just, you're not always going to have, like you mentioned, you're not always going to have a goal. But I think as long as you're doing something to entertain your mind and keep your body going, I think that's that's kind of the, the essence of what your body needs to keep keep moving. Um, what do you think? I totally agree. You have to have something to, to balance out your life. Like, whether it's just mentally. And to be honest, it's been more mental lately. I've with how busy things have been, like I've probably been able to skate for probably like 15 minutes after work or a day or two a week. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, I mean, it makes my heart want to explode and my lungs explode because I'm just so out of shape. <laughs> but it's, it, it's a fun little quick sprint workout, essentially. Go up and down the street a couple of times, push, goes quick, have some fun. And it, it just kind of makes you escape for a second and then washes off the day. That, that's all it does. It's great. And ever since I did that, it kind of just, brought my balance back a little bit, especially since I've been back to work. It gives me a second to kind of de-stress, unwind, and it doesn't take that long. Just 10, 15 minutes, I'm down the street, a few tricks here and there, and it just feels good. And then you go back inside and get back to life. And yeah. Find something you like and hold on to it. Yeah, no, for sure. And then especially if, throw some nostalgia in there too and i think that's half the battle too it's like this is cool i know i'm not going to get as deep into it as i used to be but go to the skate park a few times here and there have some fun gets me some exercise in quick exercise and it's a win-win until i break my ankle or something and then <laughs> then they tell you to eat some kc to strengthen your bones <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> so are you working on any tricks or anything or just yeah. kind of riding up and down a little bit i, I almost have 360 flips down now nice. again like so close but um i was actually flipping those better than i was doing the kick flips i was i was, I was spinning 360 flips better my heel flips are getting consistent again i've always been better at heel flips and kick flips and that's basically it right now. Just, just really trying to get high my ollies back up higher and 
simple stuff like that. Just not that 360 flips are simple, but it's just a few things. And it took my first few slams. Ooh. It just it feels a lot different when you're thir- in your thirties. <laughs> like I used to take slam after slam after slam when I was like fifteen, sixteen, and then get right back up. Now I'm like, okay, that's uh, two slams for the day. I'm going to go inside for a little bit. It's just, <laughs> just not ready. That's that's hilarious, man. It, it's cool though. It's not like you have some goals. It's just not. It's, they're uh, they're unorthodox, if you will. Your goals are improve your improve your uh, your skateboard capabilities. But yeah, just some fun stuff to look cool for myself and just be <laughs> like, hey, I used to be able to do this. Can I do it again? Right. After not doing it, probably it's it's been at least twelve years. I know that probably wow. closer to fourteen because I think the last time I bought. A full skateboard complete was I think I was 16 or 17 and then that's when I was like really getting into like track and that took all my time I was like okay either mess my ankle up every ankles up every week skating or I could uh go try to win some hardware and went with that one so but like I said it's it's fun it's cool and eventually it'd be fun to go back to do some track stuff, but just not enough time right now. Got to pick your battles and find what fits your time and your schedule. And this fits my schedule because I can do it in bits and pieces rather than drive to the track, warm up, cool down, go home. And by that time, my son's ready for bed and I miss the whole day. And right now it's not worth it to miss that time with my son right now. Yeah, no, for sure, and I'm just got me thinking. I mean, that the this development phase at the rim it just goes by so fast, you know. So like 15 minutes is really like a long time in the in the world, you know. And um, the days is I don't know, you'll just see it. It just the next thing you know, he's just I don't know, he's almost like a foot taller, you know. The next thing you know, he's he's mumbling yeah, he's, words and he's literally three times he's over three times his birth weight now. Wow, yeah. He, he was just under five pounds when he was born. He was born early. Um, and now he's over 15 pounds, and it's awesome. And he's smiling and laughing and having a blast now. Hopefully crawling very soon. What's that? So hopefully crawling very soon. Mm. He's, he's being a little stubborn, but that's that's all. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 crazy, man. The milestones that they hit in such a small time, and the next thing you know, they're <laughs> they really are uh, two or three or five or six, and you're just like, what in the world, you know? Um, so yeah, just embrace and enjoy. And I, I don't know, man. I appreciate you taking the time to just have this conversation. And and I think for anybody listening, you know, that what does this have to do with fitness and health? But this is just this is kind of if you would behind the scenes, this is real life, you know, and. Um, this is what's really going on. And this is, this is who we are. You know, we're just everyday people. We have kids, we got a family. Uh, we're, we're living out dreams that we're trying to pursue to, to make a better life. And in the midst of that, finding little ways and little outlets to, to keep ourselves going so we can be better for others around us. Um, anything you want to add to that? No, I think you said it perfectly. It's, you got to find stuff that keeps you active and happy and mentally healthy and, it's it's a balance of everything that's what the ibex method is it's not always just the fitness side it's mental physical emotional you, you just gotta balance your life and feel good about it yeah that's good man well i love you guys and i'm thankful that we could have this time um i know stevie's bedtime is coming up so i don't want to take that away from you but uh i don't know how it's nine o'clock already uh, oh it's worst ever woke up to snow on the ground after 70 degree oh, weeks and yeah you know, it's snow and then our server crashed at work today <laughs> it's been yeah. awesome but everything's fixed and we're good and gonna go get ready to put the baby to bed i think maybe play with him for a little bit let him stay up a little longer yeah we're doing a thing right now and 
Uh, I told Jeremiah, like, yes, go to bed. I'm like, hey, buddy, if you want to stay up for two more minutes, you can, you know, go brush your teeth. I'll let, I'll let you stay up for two more minutes. And like, hey, if you want to stay up for five minutes, like, help me pick up these toys. I'll let you stay up for another five minutes, you know. He's not realizing that by him doing those things, his time is being spent doing those things, and he's helping me out. But. Oh, you, you, oh, you're tr- you're using that time towards that. Man, you're stingy. I thought you were being stingy by just making him do that for, like, two minutes or, th- or five minutes. So I was like, it's okay, maybe a few things add up, maybe 10, 15 minutes. It's like, yeah, I gotta stay up a little longer. Like, nope, he's having your time while you're cleaning. <laughs> well, he's already got a little more time out of us before that, so... You say, oh yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, two more minutes, that's awesome. Five more minutes, you know. But what's crazy is- it, imagine it while he, he doesn't have the concept of a good deal yet. <laughs> but what's, by the time he's done with that, his mind is actually already like, he's processed that like, okay, I've done these things. My time is up. But he's not realizing that, he doesn't realize the concept of time <laughs> in that moment. He doesn't, he doesn't realize you're manipulating him to get things <laughs> done. I'm encouraging him. <laughs> no, it's, it's good because it helps build a routine and good habits too. Yeah. I know I'm just trolling, but like it, that's actually a good idea. I like that. Yeah. No, you'll get to the, it, it's fun, man. When you get to that stage of. Oh, no, I'm, I want to manipulate him like crazy when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> creative parenting. Yeah. Yes. But Tactical parenting. There it is. Maybe we'll write I a like book it. about it. All right, Steve. Well, thank you for your time. I, I, I guess I'll ask this question. Do you think we'll move on to the season three? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it'd be great. Um, like I said, hopefully things are a little more consistent um, by the time it's time to record the next season. And I'll at least get on for, I'll say I'll at least come on for half of them. We'll do that at least. Okay. <laughs> Can't make super promises yet, but um, it, I, I miss talking to the guests and it was always a good time, but just wasn't in the cards for this past season. Mm-hmm. So glad you were able to keep it up. And I needed, I admit, I need to go watch a couple of the episodes. I didn't catch all of them yet, but the ones I did see, pretty solid. So let's keep it up. Yeah, it's, it, we had a good turnout. We had a lot of good guests this season, a lot of good information. A lot of, uh, you know, episode one was just kind of a recap of, of all of last year. And then uh, kind of we started rolling into our, our new discussions and things, but yeah, check us out. Uh, season one, uh, we are on anchor for that and YouTube season two will be placed on anchor shortly, but we have everything on YouTube, but, um, yeah, Steve, I appreciate your time and, uh, I got nothing else, but, uh, take yeah, care of your family. Having me again. It's good being back on. So. All right, man. Until next another time. Another good season. That's right. Another good season. <laughs>